Nobody can forget the AFC Championships and the shortcomings of the Chiefs. During the final drive of the Kansas City Chiefs season, they didn't look like the Kansas City we know when you compare them in the AFC Championship to how they were against the Buffalo Bills. So, things went a little quiet, and ultimately an article surfaced, but disappeared. It's an insane article that gives a deep dive into the Kansas City Chiefs locker room rift, primarily based around Patrick Mahomes and Eric Bieniema. But before we get into the details of this article, we acknowledge that it contains several controversial statements. Here are a few disclaimers before we get to the article. It was published on a site named the Chiefs Kingdom Editorial Board. Now, let's be honest, we've never heard of the site before, and it makes some interesting claims in the article. There is a chance that what we are hearing is that we are the first ones to get to it, and the major publishers didn't get it. Or it could be some cooked up story, but we admit it was really interesting. The article begins by saying, let's set the table. This is not a normal story for the KC Star or better publications. Patrick Mahomes did not throw the game. The length of the article is intended to provide context and insight, and the NFL did not order the Chiefs to throw the game. So, straight up, they are transparent saying, hey, we are not a famous site, so you might doubt the article. The article continues to say that the football game is played with the highest level of passion possible, an energy most people simply do not understand. But realize this, what occurred on the Chiefs' sideline in the locker room during the AFC Championship wasn't a brief spat or a heat-of-the-moment flare-up. It was instead the accumulation of several issues that all came to a head at the worst possible time. We ask that you put away your preconceived notions about national reporters caring about Kansas City. The story will not be repeated because of the optics involved. So, right away, they are transparent that the story is so insane that national sources will not be able to report on it. But will the NFL miss out on opportunities to report on crazy stories that happen behind the scenes? They then offer the backgrounds of who they are, saying, This account is run by a few people, but the owner is someone who has covered the team in the background since 1997, first on KFFL.com, then NFLScoop.com, and eventually to DraftSharks.com. And they were initially known as the Save Our Chiefs movement, saying they were the single greatest fan revolt in sports fandom history rekindled the owner's connection to those in NFL circles. Chiefs employees fed us info, gave us insights into hiring Andy Reid, and much more. Since we have taken a step back, only reporting sporadically, we don't have a podcast, a website needing clients, or a need to generate profit. We simply share what we know for the enjoyment of the Chiefs' kingdom. We get asked about our sources, let me tell you how they came about. The NFL is a multi-billion dollar industry. They control 100% of the narrative. Nothing is left to chance except the police blotter. Even then, they control the longevity of something in the media. But when it comes to the team level, people will talk. And in the case of the Chiefs' most recent playoff loss, they are. Based upon information provided directly to us, there is a narrative being pushed not only by the Chiefs, but at least two high-profile players. There is nothing wrong with that, but this is how the off-the-field game is played in the NFL. The article talks about Bienyama and his job interviews, then gets to the feud between him and Mahomes. It states that the 2020 season featured some minor disagreements between Mahomes and Bienyama, that there are at times just part of playing in the NFL. It was nothing out of the ordinary. However, the situation began to head down a slippery slope as Super Bowl 55 preparations went south. Bienyama was interviewing for a head coach job while the team was trying to navigate the game plan and offset their offensive line problems. Mahomes and Reed, according to our source, had a good plan in place. Bienyama didn't like it. He made several changes, and he had the power to do so in his contract because he called the plays in 2020, as he did in 2021. This was a bit confusing, so they added an editor's note saying, Many are misinterpreting the previous paragraph. Bienyama does not have the final say over Reed. Reed at any time can intervene. In this case, Bienyama disagreed, lobbied for a different set of plays to be called, and convinced Reed and Mahomes it made sense. The person with the final say can and often does deter to a subordinate, especially when he is trying to help that person get a head coaching job. The article adds that one month after the Super Bowl loss, the decision was made to bring back Bienyama on a quiet one-year deal, hoping that he'd receive the head coaching position that he had worked for. Everyone was on board with the game plan. Focus on the optics. It's easier to lose a coach publicly to a promotion than having to potentially fire a high-profile coach. Optics matter a lot to these owners. This is something believable. It's wired for a team that made it to the Super Bowl, fire their coach. Then the Chiefs started poorly in 2021. 
Mahomes struggled, eyebrows were raised, the national media dug in smelling blood, and we all blame Jackson Mahomes for this. The reality of the situation, schemes were misaligned. Several defensive backs were not getting along with the defensive back coach, Sam Madison, and the Chiefs had lingering injuries. And then the biggest snowball of all started rolling, the hidden feud between Bienyama and Mahomes. In week three, during a midweek meeting between Bienyama, QB coach Mike Kafka, and Mahomes, Bienyama laid into his starting quarterback for no reason. Both Kafka and Mahomes pushed back on Bienyama. After this heated argument, which was not normal, Reed stepped in. Following the loss to the Bills, Kafka was quietly given a greater role in planning the Chiefs' passing game. Kafka is known for being creative offensively at Arrowhead. His innovations are often called Mike Files. He came up with the Rose Bowl right, the play the Chiefs ran for a key first down in Super Bowl 54. Things got controversial, calling for another editor's note saying, an error was made here. While Kafka does not have plays called Mike Files, there are also plays called Joe Files that come from the Chiefs' wide receiver coach, Joe Blameyer. We incorrectly attributed Rose Bowl right to Kafka when in fact, that was Blameyer's doing. We apologize for this accidental misidentification. This made us think the article was legit. So at this point, Bienyama's role was adjusted, but Reed continued to let him call the plays once the Chiefs' opening scripts were exhausted. This was in Bienyama's contract. The changes led to the Chiefs having a run of success. Then, before the Chiefs' Riders game in Las Vegas, Reed told production officials to avoid sideline shots of Bienyama. Something again had happened in the week of prep leading up to the game. The article continues, nobody will go on records as to what other than to say. Something happened. But if you go back and rewatch the game this year, Bienyama's camera time went down compared to years past. Yep, we are starting to get a little skeptical about this article. Since then, numerous fans who have attended games at Arrowhead and on the road have asked, what's with Bienyama and Mahomes? They are beefing on the sidelines. The answer, Mahomes and Bienyama do not get along. For anyone questioning Mahomes at this point, consider the following insight from a family member of a high-profile Chiefs player. Most of the guys tune Bienyama out because he does the one thing good coaches don't do, ignores feedback from players. We have heard from multiple Chiefs staff, including some who stand on the sidelines, that Reed, Mahomes, and Bienyama have disagreed over game plans and strategy all year, as well as far back to late 2020. The same sources have indicated to us that the reason Bienyama doesn't have a head coaching job is because of his temperament and unwillingness to accept feedback from his players. This came up with the Houston Texans and the New Orleans Saints. Broncos GM George Patton asked Bienyama point blank in his interview about a situation he saw while in Kansas City earlier this season. The answer from Bienyama eliminated him from job contention. At this point, there is an editor's note saying, we want to be clear here. There are multiple factors that led to Bienyama not receiving final consideration for the Denver job. It was not just one answer. We could have structured this sentence better. On the last play before halftime, three feet and nearly two years of frustration wiped out a chance to secure Kansas City's third straight Super Bowl berth. Poor communications, stubbornness, and a lack of game control all came together at the worst possible time. Players have to execute the play, but the coaches also have a job to do. Bienyama failed in this situation, and everyone in the NFL knows it. An events timeline as per the article. Timeout number one by the Cincinnati Bengals at nine seconds to go. Bienyama tells Mahomes he has a timeout left, and they had five play calls lined up, two of which were runs that were never sent in. The first play failed. Bienyama then told Mahomes he had one timeout left and to run play X or take a field goal. The narrative that Bienyama only wanted a field goal is 100% false. Bienyama called the play that resulted in a doomed pass to Hill, not Reed. Mahomes then tried to call a timeout and the clock expired. Bienyama called the entire game. While Reed can chime in at any point and toss out a call, Bienyama had full calling authority via his contract. Bienyama and Mahomes get into it at halftime, in the tunnel and in the locker room. There was in-the-face yelling before Reed and the other coaches stepped in. It happened again after the game. Any remaining confidence or trust in the relationship was bracketed at this point. Anyone who has played QB at a higher level will say that the headset can't be chaotic. Usually, only one coach has access, but this goes unchecked by the NFL. Unfortunately, those in-game moments where Mahomes is squeezing his helmet and receiving a call late are due to multiple voices on the hot mic. This happened multiple times in 2021, and during the AFC Championships, it was chaotic, particularly before the final snap prior to halftime. Nobody can say exactly when this happened, but at one point during the AFC Championship, the following exchange took place after Bienyama called to play. Reed, no, run this. Bienyama, 
What the f Kafka, we are blowing the game. Mahomes, call the f play or I will. Another editor's note popped up stating, we fully understand that Mahomes does not have a two-way mic. His statement was heard from the field and sidelines and was sequential to his exchange as told to us. Mahomes has said this multiple times over the years. Every QB to play the game has said something like this. Mahomes was caught on camera saying this in the Denver game and those issues boiled all season. A high profile offensive lineman snapped and spoke at halftime. This player is usually quiet, so his words resonated with several high ranking members of the Chiefs brass the past three weeks. Bienyama called the entire second half, calling multiple times for Clyde Edwards Alaire to get the ball instead of Jack McKinnon. Bienyama called for Demarcus Robinson to get the ball in overtime over McCole Hardman. Both passes fell incomplete. Bienyama ignores feedback from Hill, Travis Kelsey, Hardman, and McKinnon. He had his my way or the highway moment calling plays in the second half. At the end of regulation, with the Chiefs needing a touchdown to win, Bianyama called at least two plays that the team hadn't practiced in three months that led to confusion across the board, from line blocking assignment routes to Mahomes looking shaken. Rewatch that series. Mahomes didn't throw the game. Bianyama literally created a mass confusion in the most pivotal moment of the game. Since the AFC Championship, Super Agent Lee Steinberg and Bob Lamont have done a lot of talking about Bienyama and Mahomes. This keeps the line of communication between Mahomes and Reed clear and consistent, but at the same time, players are speaking up and trying to handle this situation via the back of the clubhouse. Bienyama has an image problem to work on due to his prospective owners noticing his temperament, the way he ignores his players, and his past criminal issues. The latter is a big issue in the eyes of many. The thing is, if you really want to be up to date with Patrick Mahomes, this isn't enough on its own. There's actually more to the story that you definitely haven't heard about before. And that's why you really shouldn't ignore this video here, because it's going to take what you just learned and make it 10 times more powerful, maybe even 100 times.